Hey dorks, just a quick message reminding you to head over to twitch.tv slash mindgappodcast and give us a follow. We live stream when we record our new podcast episodes, and we're live streaming video game sessions on Saturday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time. We're playing super rad stuff like Among Us, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, Jackbox Games, and Tabletop Simulator. Come hang out and play along with us. That's twitch.tv slash mindgappodcast. Mind Gap Podcast. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And we are just two lovable male adults who are happy that you are with us and that we are with you in your ear canals. And if you're with us, with us on Twitch, we're with you in your face as well. We stand. Heavy night, I'm just saying. Hey, man, it always is. You know, adults yeah. is a stretch. We are legally adults, sir. Yeah. Married with gaming. The government cannot tell us otherwise. That's true. We are legally adults. And My ID goes horizontal, not vertical. I'm an adult. Is that a thing? Yeah. If you're under 17, you're, your license is up and down. It's vertical. That makes sense, right? For a quick quick look at this, like, ah, you're, you're still a child. It, is it 18 or 21? I can't tell. That's, I got my niece. You can't I or just, won't tell? I don't know. Well, the thing is, the the one I've seen recently was my niece, and she's 17. So I don't know if it's... Because she isn't 18 or because she's in 21. So <gasps> Brock! What's up? <gasps> Is that Brock? Brock knows. Oh, Who knows? Dude, here's, here's Brock knows. Brock showing up <laughs> means that no one has to spend money on this. <laughs> Save your points. We Save are your so points. <laughs> That's What's on up, the house man? for Brock. Oh my gosh. Good to see you, pal. Good Holy to see cow. you. Hope you're well. And if anyone's going to know what an ID is going to look like, it's going to be Brock. That guy hashtag, gets it. Hashtag Brock knows. Hashtag Lieutenant, if I'm not mistaken. Lieutenant Brock knows. I didn't want to say the wrong one. Yeah, I think if, I'm, if my memory serves. I yeah. took. I was, I was like, I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. I like it. Cool. So. Yeah. Hashtag Lieutenant Brock knows. <laughs> he knows. He yeah. knows about this shit. This guy knows. Correct. Yes. Still LT. Well, I knew well it. I knew it. I knew it. Well, uh, let's uh, let's get started here with a little bit of housekeeping while Justin adjusts his mic because he's all night. All, all night, baby, all night long. Uh, like <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, it's fine. You, you do you, man. You gotta. The you thing gotta... is, I realize this is fully on the actual. This isn't Twitch. This is the podcast that we're affecting. So go ahead. <laughs> Uh, first things first, uh, if you don't already, follow us on Spotify, as well as other places, but we do exist on Spotify, you should check us out there, so please do. Second, join our Discord server. Mm. You can find the link to that if you go to twitch.tv slash mindgappodcast. We have a little Discord link down below on our channel. Click on that. Join the MindGap family. We've had a couple people join. Explain to me, what are the benefits of joining the MindGap Discord? <laughs> Well, here's the thing when it comes yeah. to the mind gap discord what's what's wonderful about it is you get to join up with a bunch of nerds a bunch of people who are like-minded and they post a bunch of silly stuff and we get together we look for groups to play video games which is awesome and i gotta say i said this last week and i'll say it again i haven't had a dedicated dedicated group of people to play games with since i was in college and to know that at any given time, I can just go out, drop in the looking for group channel, like, hey, anyone want to play games? And at least two or three people go, yeah, I'm down. It's the fucking best. And I Brilliant. love that. I love it so much. It makes me so happy. And it's just cool. We, you know, we've got several folks that are also streamers and we celebrate them while they're streaming as well. So it's a great community. Come hang out. Um, it, we, we love to have you. It's great. We just we're a bunch of silly we're a bunch of silly gooses. So we'd love to have you. We play games. We post memes. We shit post. We bash gerbas. We communicate via GIF. You know all that all good those stuff. Things are true. That's right. That's right. Um, so definitely join that. Also check out our new home for merch, 
which is at redbubble.com. Just head over to Redbubble, type in Mind Gap Podcast. You will find our page that has over 30 items to choose from with our wonderful, lovely Mind Gap logo. We also have our logo, the I Will Haunt Your Butt logo, is up on there well as well. So you've got t-shirts. You've got drawstring bags you've got backpacks you've got actual paintings you've got travel mugs you've got coffee mugs you've got sweatshirts you've got hoodies you've got it all and not to mention stickers so come get your uh, get something comfortable get something cool uh, and support the podcast we love you shout out to wolf wolf slore he already bought his, his coffee mug it looks divine and we thank you thank you very much we hope you enjoy that get that hot stuff in your mouth boy get it Get that hot stuff in your mouth stuff. In your mouth. And last but not least, if you don't already, uh, come follow us on twitch.tv slash mindgappodcast. We love our Twitch folks. They're lovely. They're the best. We uh, record our podcast live every Tuesday night with a live digital audience. And also on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. Central, we host a video game night where... Oftentimes we're playing things like Jackbox games. We're playing Left 4 Dead 2. Or we're playing Dustin, Dustin, Jesus. Justin and his his, his Dungeon Karens go into Dungeons and Dragons, the fantasy board game. We're playing Among Us. I'm burping into the mic. Anything is possible when you're here with us. Twitch.tv slash MindGapPodcast. Hit the follow link. It means a lot to us. And you'll turn on notifications so whenever we go live, you'll know about it. We will love you forever and ever. Here's another thing that we post out there, because in the chat right now, Jared asks, when will there be an I've put my dick in worse shirt? Um, wait, is this it? I've put my dick in worse. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't named something completely different. <laughs> um, what do I have? I have, it, I have it named as the Bill of Rights. I have it. Oh, Jared fucked a pumpkin. That's what I have. I've put my dick in worse. I don't know why. Wow. So Jared asked that, and Slotty said, once you create the artwork, so... I'll say this too. If there's a bit that we do and you guys like anyone listening and you would like to submit original artwork, uh, you can submit it for approval to get up on the store and you might just say, you're not going to see a dime if we sell stuff for it, but you will know that your artwork went on a shirt or a mug or a pillow or a keychain or a sticker or a yeah. drawstring bag or a sweatshirt or a hoodie or anything like that. Yeah, for sure. We love, yeah. we love that stuff. So we very much appreciate you. And all that you do yes. so woo! and i'm trying to i've already forgotten uh what i did for oh yeah we played uh last last uh video game night we played a uh, concept on tabletop simulator and had ourselves a doozy of a time it was so much fun um we were just if you're not familiar concept is a wonderful board game we play it digitally on tabletop simulator and uh it's just the bet just the best. JS Blue 549. Hello and welcome. How are you? Welcome. We're so happy to see you. Wasn't that a nice welcome, Justin? That was perfect. Thank you for acknowledging me. I appreciate that. JS Blue 549. Welcome. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. We're so glad you're here. Oh my gosh. It's so delightful. Uh, but yeah, we had a really great time, man. We had a nice group of people, and yeah. uh, it got it got silly, it got wacky. Noah got drunk. He spilled on his hey. lap again. It was great. It was awesome. It was a really good time. Things are good. Things are good when Noah spills in his lap. Yeah, you know it's, it's a good night. It's a it's a great night. I'm thinking <laughs> maybe this Saturday, possibly doing some Jackbox. Maybe oh I'm flirting with the idea of maybe doing that, which could be fun. So you're flirting with disaster is what you're doing. We'll I see. like it. We'll see. We'll see what uh-huh. we feel like. Uh, also, Battlefront 2 uh, was free like a couple weeks ago, and I got that for free. Been playing that a lot, so I'm also maybe thinking possibly doing that if you want to see me be mediocre at that game. Guys, you got options is what I'm hearing. Come <laughs> come by. Come by this Saturday, and you've got options. you got options. You don't know what's going to happen. Swing by. You never know. <laughs> Thank you. Slotty said Doug's Bosk is on point. Thank you. That's I don't know what only, that means. That's a, it's one of the heroes. It's one of the it's, it's it was like a throwaway character in Empire Strikes Back. Uh, and uh you can play as that guy as a hero in the game and that's one of the only heroes I'm really good at. So Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Guys, come perfect. see Doug get his Bosk off. <laughs> hey man, I'm going to Bosk you off, okay? Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> work that Bosk. Oh, we're going to work that Bosk. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's start tonight off with a topic with something that was just lighting up 
over the weekend, and that is the Godzilla versus Kong uh, movie trailer that came in. With some bite, might you say? <laughs> yeah. Woo! God damn it! I'm Cruz. Everybody, I'm Cruz. <laughs> Anyone who can guess who that is gets, uh, I'll, I'll give you free merch if you can guess who that is. Tom Cruise. I did it already. No, you were not correct, sir. You're not correct. So the movie trailer for, uh, yeah, for Rampage 2 dropped <laughs> this weekend. And man, was it a doozy. Man, it was something. Um, it, was, it was a trailer. That's for sure. What did it you think about movie, it? It was a movie trailer. That's what I thought about it. It fit the criteria to be considered a movie trailer. It was, you know, yeah. it, it had a lot of oranges and blues, you know, very it, typical on that, on that, you know, once I, once that, I, I, this is something you're familiar with, like, you know, obviously when the color wheel of things, like the complementary colors and orange and blue are yeah. complementary to each other. And once I saw an article years ago that pointed out that almost there's so many movie posters and things like oh. that, that have that, I could not unsee it. You see the you, orange no. and blue tint. It's it's like everywhere in everything. Yeah. And now that yeah, if you've never heard that before, and now that keep your eyes open, you will see it everywhere. You can also find uh, images, collages that people have put together with examples of different movie posters, just really illustrating how often it's used. Yeah. And not even yeah. just in movie posters, but in like when they when they actually do coloring in the actual uh, film. But yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Godzilla is, I guess, a shade of grayish blue. Kong is brownish orange. It's right there, you know. Um, yeah. But they had the sunsets versus the uh, versus the the gamma breath or whatever the fuck he does. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, it's all right there. Go watch the trailer. You'll be just as impressed as we were. Yeah, that was one with the mouth. <laughs> that one, you'll never hear it again. It was that, just that was organic. That was an organic, an organic yeah. one. I um, I yeah. was. Like we talked about, I, uh, I, I liked Kong Skull Island. Uh, I liked the first Godzilla. Uh, I, I thought the second one was fun. I didn't like it as much, but I thought it was fun. Uh, it was a good action movie. Um, I was legitimately, I was excited for this. Uh, since they started uh, teasing it, I, I've been like, oh, this one might actually work because they've done good with the, They didn't, I don't think they were like, stellar movies but they did really good with the uh initial properties and i'm like well if they're if they're marching towards a uh a merged universe here they might have something with this one and then this trailer came out and i just felt that felt this sense of empty inside i was like oh man that's what i was waiting for oh boy yeah you know i think the hardest part about these is there's inevitably a human element to it because that's the only way you're going to feel connection to this, you know, is like there has to be some sort of human story to it. And that's always yeah. the least compelling part of these films. You just want to watch these things smash the, each other to bits, but right. it can't be two hours of that. So you have to have this human component where you're like, I don't fucking care what's going on with you. Right. You know, They're like trying the, to find a, Godzilla's acting weird. <laughs> what? The only one who can stand up to him is Kong. <laughs> And it's then you've just, got people yeah. from one franchise and people from the other finally meeting, and it's just this weird, yeah, yeah. It's 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 one of those things where, um, like the first Godzilla movie, it was like you're following, you know, Quicksilver, you know, as he's you know trying to make his way, and it's just like yeah, they, you're like you just want to watch Godzilla fuck up some, you know, some of these insect creatures, right? But you got to have yeah. a compelling reason. <clears throat> it's also got to be like Godzilla's fighting for us. It's like is he? Is he? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I don't feel like he is. And then, you know, in the second Godzilla movie, it's like, there's this terrorist organization that's trying to call all these creatures to fight. And that's like, okay, I mean, I guess if that lets us get to where we're going to fight these things, then cool, I guess. I mean, yeah. that's fine. Um, but that's, it's all you, it's, it's like with Pacific Rim. All you want to watch is giant robots fuck up giant sea creatures. Like, that's really, at the right. end of the day, what you want to see. And you, you you know get, unfortunately, is, you can't have, you have to have a break in between those scenes. And this is a, one of the rare instances where these would be better served as short films. Right. Like or if you just made episodes, these, like, you know, 
or a, yeah, like a half hour uh, short film or an episode, this would fucking slay. This would be fantastic. Just enough to get the monsters to where they need to be and then fucking open it up. Just yeah, do right. it. Yeah. I, I, uh, I guess let's break down the trailer just a little bit and, and kind of talk about why it, it didn't necessarily work. I guess I, I know Godzilla is, you know, uh, in, in the last one, you know, wasn't thrilled with people, but he was still defending people and he wanted to be the king of the Titans and all that. I guess we're going to find out. I'm sure why Godzilla is going a little berserker in this, but it just seems they're opening it up with Godzilla flipped on us. And I'm like, where, how did we make this jump? That's a very big, in the trailer, that's a big story jump to make uh, yeah. from where we last left things. And uh, also, uh, someone in the chat brought this up. King Kong is bigger than an aircraft carrier, and they're both standing on this aircraft carrier, jumping on it, and it's not sinking. Like To me, that was the first thing I'm like, I don't buy this movie. I understand it's a giant gorilla and a giant dragon that breathes atomic breath, but I don't buy this movie. Well, for me, it's like my my initial thing is like, aren't they both good guys? Yes, I think they're both chaotic good. You know, and so wow. Do you think? Do you even know what that means, Justin? I do, I do. They're feral, <laughs> so they're chaotic, but they both have good intent. Because I mean, it makes you think. Um, wow, hold on to that one, Slotty. Um, where it, it's it's it makes you think that you know there's obviously something else going on, and maybe they're going to team up together to fight whatever right. is behind it. And it's just I don't know. It seems like a thinly veiled thing of like, oh, these guys, these guys are going to fight. It's like Batman v Superman, right? Like they're going to fight, but right. they're also going to be best friends, you know? Maybe um, it's a love story. We don't know. Maybe maybe it is. Um, also, I just was like, wow, you have a giant gorilla on water and the aircraft carrier breaks. I was like, well, that, there goes that. And he's done. <laughs> that must be the end Wait, of the movie. Presumably, uh, is he standing then, just standing <laughs> in the ocean? Like <laughs> That or it's like he gets in the water and he just dies because, right. you know, gorillas can't swim. So he's fucked. Your greatest yeah. natural enemy, water. Water. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so Slotty goes, maybe they both stop fighting when they find out they each have a mother named Mothra. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Wait, do your do your King Kong impression and say, why did you say that name? Okay, this is going to be completely unintelligible. I just want—I want this to be clear. Like you're—you're you're not going to hear anything worthwhile. All right, you ready? Here go. we go. <laughs> See, completely unintelligible, right? That's so fucking ridiculous. Right? <laughs> oh, I love it. There's nothing um, intelligible that comes out of that that voice that's mod. That's Godzilla, baby. Yeah, <laughs> that's Godzilla. So. I get, the other thing for me is is again we've and we talked about this a little off mic, but the fact and I know primates use tools, but the fact that Godzilla's got some sort of an axe or or battle hammer hammerstein that can absorb radioactive breath and then redirect it back into uh, Godzilla. I just like is does he inherently know how to use this? Was this passed down from his Kong ancestors? Like what what is this? How does he know how to use this thing? I just that I was like the minute that you start giving them weapons that they're actually manipulating and like using tactically, I don't buy it. Yeah. In it's... the previous movie, he was throwing trees at people. Yeah. Like yeah. that's where we that's where we came from. Did someone like it, like the the SEAL Team Six drop down and be like, "All right, we're gonna teach you. Here's a life a, a Kong size M eight, uh, you know, M sixty, M sixteen. I don't know what the fuck guns are, but <laughs> here's a big fucking gun, Kong. Okay, now here's a battle axe. Yeah, and it's no, to it. It's yeah, <laughs> it's Stormbringer. It's Stormbringer. Um, yeah, like it's one of those things where I, I look at it and I'm like, this is just pure fun. Like it's like Fast and the Furious to me, yeah. you know. It's yeah, just very yeah. much like let's see this happen. I'm not gonna take it too seriously, but at the same time, it's just I've always been really lukewarm on these. Like I think I was pretty excited for the first God's most recent incarnation of Godzilla that came out in like 2014. The one with Millie Bobby? No, was that no? The one with uh, no. Quicksilver and Wanda. Oh right, the 
the incest Godzilla. Yes. yes. Um, you know, I was like, oh, it's cool. And it was, it's funny because I've only seen it once and I can't seem to find it anywhere else, like where it's streaming or it's just, it seems to just be kind of be out there somewhere. <laughs> Because I kind of want to rewatch it again because I was like, there it, again, there were some cool moments. Like I remember uh, in yeah. that movie, like when you see Godzilla for the first time, I think it's in Hawaii and like everyone's screaming and then like there's this giant f- lizard foot that comes down and you're like, oh yeah. shit, that's Godzilla. And he's going to fight this thing. You know, there's some pretty cool moments. Um, and it was it was fine. It was enjoyable. You know, yeah. one of my favorite ones was the train sequence where they're moving the uh, atomic warhead. Mm-hmm. Uh, and through and that those the giant creatures that were coming together to mate uh it, to me i'm like that's actually really i know it's all cg and everything but it was really i felt that the tension was heightened and it was i was like this is a good monster moment mm-hmm. so there yeah. were really good yeah. elements in that and kong i thought was a good action movie i i thoroughly enjoyed that movie i i remember watching it and i that's all i remember is that i've watched it and i don't really have Fair. much else i think it was enjoyable but forgettable and yeah. um um you know it's it, these things to me are like i remember being a kid and watching king kong movies and godzilla movies and i really enjoyed them and i think a part of me enjoys this franchise because of that because it's yeah. like you know it's it's just fun it's it's pulpy it's fun it's in, it's yeah. just it's whatever it's giant creatures fucking each other up man it's great right. it's it's awesome but I'm just not that excited. I'm like, I won't go. S- I mean, technically, it's going to be streaming on H- HBO Max, so I'll probably watch it when it's on oh, there. I'm 100% so I'm 100% going to watch it. I'm more be- between the two, just based off trailers. I'm far more interested in watching Rampage than I am in watching this. <laughs> That's actually a good question. I would rather watch, I think, Godzilla versus Kong than Rampage. Would you? Well, it's yeah. too bad that you own one of them. <laughs> it's not too bad. I mean, it'll, it's there haunting me whenever I scroll I through cannot- my movies. I can't wait to get a vaccine and come over and watch that movie with you. <laughs> it's, it's, out of everything, I'm, I'm most excited for that. Hello, Etoy07. How are you, pal? Giant creatures fucking. You came in at the right time. That's right. Um, I want to go back up here real quick. Uh, Slotty asked a great question, which was, uh, what's more believable? Uh, Godzilla versus Kong or Wonder Woman 84? <laughs> <clears throat> Believable in what context? <laughs> um, I don't. Because uh, here's the thing, like I fully know what I'm getting into with a yeah. Godzilla versus Kong movie. I feel like oh. I was lied to with Wonder Woman '84 to some degree. <laughs> My here's the thing, I would say Wonder Woman '84 if if not for the scene where they call from, I believe the middle East and within presumably 24 hour or I don't know, within a matter of what seems just a couple hours, they're back in DC at some clandestine meeting with a dude who has a secret Mayan tome. I think if not for that one scene, it'd probably be wonder woman for me, but that one scene, just if I'm going to point to one scene that ruined the movie, it's that scene. Like I say, if there's one thing that I point to that ruins Godzilla versus Kong, it's it's Kong's axe. So, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I'd say it looks fun. It looks enjoyable. I feel like you know what you're going to get with this movie. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of surprises. <laughs> and that's the hard part is I don't know what I was expecting because this is almost certainly the movie that I should have been expecting, you know, mm-hmm. and, and without having seen the movie. We're making a lot of judgments yeah. and pre-assessments on this, but based off of the trailer, I guess I should have, I should have expected this for some reason. I just thought it, I, there would be more as substance or feeling of substance. And maybe it was just a poorly cut trailer. I don't know. There's don't a, know. there's a chance it could maybe like the actual movie actually does pull you in. I mean, it seemed like they were trying to mash a bunch of stuff in that'd be like, you guys are going to watch this, right? You know, like look at all this cool shit that's happening, you yeah. know? You know what I wish they wouldn't have shown? And maybe this is it. I wish they would not have shown so much of the monsters battling. Yeah. Because that was a significant chunk of the film. And we know they're going to battle, but it's like showing Hulk in Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Save that. It's like, Uh, build that up and let people be like, show the two of them, maybe show Kong's hand and then like waking up and like sensing something, show Godzilla coming up. Don't show them going at it. 
save that. That's the that's the thing that people are gonna come watch. But you're showing us what that looks like in the trailer. That's or watch my them problem. like running towards each other, and then that's right. where this trailer ends. You know, sure, like, yeah. And don't show uh, me the axe until I have context for the axe. <laughs> if Why does he have an axe? If you build it into the story, okay. But don't show it to me before I know anything about it, because now I'm pissed at it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I, I, it's funny you bring up Thor Ragnarok because I watched Thor Ragnarok again recently uh, with with my daughter, and I'm just sitting there going, God, how cool would it have been? No one knew that Thor, that, that Hulk was going to be in this. Like, if you right. just didn't know, and I know a lot of people were like, it was for the marketing, it was to get people excited, but I was like, oh, god damn it, what a great reveal that would have been. You just yeah, it was it was just a it was a miss. Like I under yeah, you want to get them excited, but man, what if there was this this buzz of like, guys, there's a cameo and you're not gonna believe it. Well, they that don't even say they don't, they don't say anything. It's just like right. cool. I wonder who this champion is, and then you see like the green puffs of smoke, and you hear ah, and out of it comes. Bruh. Everyone would have been right. like, would have been like, Woo! but what I'm saying is word of mouth. Like True. let that let that buzz. Don't give it away in the trailer yeah. to hype it up. Let people go. Like if I would have seen it and I would have talked to you, I'm, I would have gone, Doug, there is a cameo that's going to make you shit your pants. Yeah. Right. And you'd have been like, oh, I'm fucking in now. Like that would have person to person, like peer to peer hype would have, yeah. I feel like done just as much as showing in the trailer. <laughs> Slotty keeps saying Mecha Godzilla. He's the big bad at the end, right? I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Is it the mechanical Godzilla? Maybe yeah. it's Megazord and we tie in the Power Rangers, which are coming out onto HBO. <laughs> Uh, HBO Max. They got a new movie coming. Sorry, not Power Rangers, Mortal Kombat. We'll figure out a way to tie them in before the end of the show. Jesus Christ, you confuse Power Rangers with Mortal Kombat? Yeah, it, it happens. No, it doesn't. Sure. No. Supposedly, I think I read something about that. That's supposed to be like what, R rated and, you know, gritty? Like the, look, you, did, you, did I ever show you the fan film? That uh, they did a, I think it was a web series. Rather. I think I remember you showed me one. It was, it, it was, it, I, th- yeah, it's Scorpion and Jax. Think, yeah. And Baraka, I think. I think so. I remember you showed it to me. Like, the guy who played Scorpion and stuff, like, it, yeah, I don't I don't think I saw the whole series, but I think you showed me, like, the, the first episode, and it was very intriguing. But they did it They did it uh, gritty. Like, there was, yeah. like, they straight up murdered each other, and there was blood, and, like, you saw, yeah. you saw it go down. It was real, like, solid fight choreography. If it's done like that, fucking game on. Yeah, I think it's hard to, and I don't know, I haven't played... Mortal Kombat since Mortal Kombat 2 so I mean I don't know but I think it'd be difficult to craft a story but I know they've been doing it you know for a while now they've had many yeah. different uh, Mortal Kombat's where they have Mortal Kombat 11 now I think that's what they're up to Jesus so, Christ is it that wow yeah it's pretty uh, pretty wild um, yeah I guess cool we can explore that I guess speaking of exploring stuff uh oh uh oh uh, did you all hear that they're going to be using AI robots to make sure people aren't lonely. Doug, tell me about it. Well, I'd love to tell you about it. So, for starters... There's an AI. Hmm. Gotta remember her name. Her name is Sophia. And the maker of Sophia, the robot plans to sell droids to people seeking company during... COVID. Ooh. Yeah. So there's a. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> sure, Doug's, why not? Doug's hand. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get the uh, Doug fucks robots or Doug's fuck bots jokes out now. Let's get them out. Let's get them out. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, a, it's, 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 it's like the perfect one. Apparently, this guy, David Hansen, wants to sell thousands of robots in 2021. And I got to say, the. Uh, I love this last name is Hansen. Hi, I'm yeah. David Hansen. Were you going to fuck this robot? <laughs> That's the first question they ask whenever they sell them. They're like, hi, right. so interested you're in, uh, interested in Sophia. Are you going to fuck this robot? <laughs> it's Chris Hansen's brother, David Hansen. It's just to catch a predator robot edition. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this link in the chat, and I want you all just to see the, the, uh, um, the really awkward picture that's like <laughs> at the front of this. It's this guy kissing Sophia in the cheek, and even the robot just looks like she's like uncomfortable with it. So it's really, un- it's really not cool. There was but, no consent given. No, 
But the deal here is that um, there's this robot. It's named Sophia. It's built by Hanson Robotics, and they want to. They're aiming to roll out four models in the first half of 2021, and they're saying that it's so unique uh, by being so human-like that they can be so useful during these times where people are terribly lonely and socially isolated. Um, apparently, they aim to, like I said, sell thousands of the droids this year. Um, and Sophia is well, apparently the planet's most famous real-world robot, but it's also attracted controversy. Apparently, Saudi Arabia granted citizenship to Sophia in 2017, which is incredibly insulting because they don't give rights to women, but they gave it to a robot. So, good ta-da. stuff. Way to be. Um, Hansen has been mocked for claiming that Sophia is basically alive when essentially just a chatbot in a robotic body. And in 2018, Facebook's uh, chief AI scientist, Yan LeCun, described Sophia as complete bullshit. <laughs> 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 which, uh, which I understand, which is just hilarious to me. Um, yeah. And my favorite part of this, the very last line of this article says, but robosexuals should take note. Sophia isn't programmed to f- perform. Se- <laughs> Sophia isn't programmed to perform sex acts. Now, anyone listening on Twitch or to the actual podcast, uh, I'd like you to just pause the episode briefly uh, and and just on your work computer, just Google robot sexual. Look up ro- robo sexual. Go ahead and do it because yeah. that's what I did last night when we were prepping for this. I was like, "What's well, a robo sexual?" Right. You yeah. should see the ads being served to Doug now on Amazon. All I gotta Please. say is. I'm happy. I have erections all the time now with these ads. So <laughs> things are great. But um, yeah, uh, first of all, <laughs> that literally said, Doug, Doug, we're talking to you specifically. No fucking this one. <laughs> There's our first one. And here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Um, you can't tell me what to do. You know, <laughs> old fashioned Ethan. I love that journey for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to say. You can't tell me what I could do with this thing that I buy. You know, guess what? A watermelon. You're not supposed to fuck those, but can you? Yeah. Just carve a hole in it and you're good to go. Oh Listen, life uh, finds a way. Okay. That's all I'm saying. All right. Life but what's going to happen is some asshole is going to get his dick stuck in this robot's mouth. Oh, yeah. And they're going to have to go to the hospital to get it removed, their dick maybe, and then they're going to get COVID while they're there. So they're going to die because they got their dick stuck in a robot, in a robot's mouth. So, And then David Hansen pops out and goes, I told you not to fuck this robot. Told you. You weren't supposed to do it. So Sorry. Bum, 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 bum. You know? Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. No, um, that was a good I, reaction. I just... Uh, Based off of what these robots look like, um, there there is and and it's I understand we joke all the jokes come back to fucking the robot, but there's truth behind it. People are gonna <laughs> fuck these robots like that's. Let's, let's just let's get down to brass tacks, tacks. Let's get down ladies brass and gentlemen. Tacks. They're gonna, gonna fuck get, these robots. It's gonna get gross. Okay, there's no way of stopping. I personally don't think that. I'm lucky enough to where I'm. I I've not been alone during the pandemic, so. I can't speak to uh, what it does feel like to to be completely isolated, not be able to see anyone. You maybe have virtual meetings, but to not have someone with you. I, w- I struggle to believe that I would hit a point where I would want this lifelike AI robot sitting next to me, like or across from me at dinner. And I'm like, well, how was your day? <laughs> like, what do you talk to this robot about? Like how, well, like yeah. what? Yeah, what are the conversations that you're having with it? And at some point, does that lead to even deeper depression? Because now you come to the realization that your life has fallen into an AI best friend. It's a great question. Uh, you know, I'm in the same boat. Uh, I'm surrounded by my wife and my daughter, so I have connection and conversation every single day. Um, and when, with my job, I'm on, you know, virtual meetings most of the time, too. So I have a lot of that conversation. So it's hard. It's definitely hard for me to consider having this because I'm like, yeah. I, I have that. On the flip side, I, I'd also like to think that if I didn't have that, doing things like playing games, you know, doing this pod. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think this is just as good right now what we're doing 
virtually as sure. having a chat bot in a physical body in my house that I'm not supposed to fuck. Because I think that's just a tease is what that is at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Well, you know? Doug wouldn't think that. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I, cause I, I also would like to know what what is possible with the – is this truly just a chat bot? <clears throat> You know, well, that's or, what I'm saying. Like, what is the what, com- what are the conversations go into? Like, how deep of a conversation can you have with this? Can you be yeah. like, can it talk to you about movies with any sort of? Is it just reciting IMDb pages to you? You know, or yeah. Wikipedia articles, or is it? You know, can you talk about philosophy with it? Can you talk about? Because it's AI, it doesn't necessarily understand the nuances of the human condition or love or anything like that. So, at, at what point, you know? And at what point does it become self-aware and murder you in the middle of the night? Uh, you know, it's just, yeah, it's one of those things where I'm like, you know, it depends on how sophisticated it is. If it actually truly is this phenomenal and this this incredible thing that is capable of having complex conversations, and I'm like, that's awesome. Like, that's, that's really cool, and it could be useful. But I don't know. I just, at this point, I kind of feel like, you know, how, how I would need to see – how good it is at having these conversations because like right. you said is it like talking to siri we're like hey uh you know man this you know kong versus godzilla what do you think about that it's like local times for kong versus godzilla at the <laughs> amc east at 8 30 it's like cool that's exactly what i want you know like ugh. i love this old-fashioned even says what do you think they are programming google siri and alexa to do ultimate romantic partner who helps you buy stuff and spies on you plus bj's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, that's the other question too. Is like, will this AI get pissed off if you're talking to Siri or Alexa? Is it gonna get like? Does it become self aware and you walk in the room and it it's sitting in the dark? It flicks the lights on because it's wired to your fucking ho- smart home. It turns the lights on and it's got your phone in its hand and it just crushes it and goes, "Who's Siri?" Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I like the idea behind it. I think it's it's good to because um, I think I saw a program advertised year years ago where it was some uh, folks in um, nursing homes were connecting with uh, English as a second language students. Okay. And essentially, these older folks got to connect with people over Zoom or whatever, and they um, were getting to communicate and and have conversations. And the English as a second language folks were getting to practice their English. It was like beneficial for everybody. And I'm like, that's wow, great. that's a yeah. really cool sort of idea. And, and you know, you think about how important that is to kind of have that sort of connection and that sort of conversation. And if you can truly get that from an AI, I'm all for it. You know, I think that's great. Um, I am kind of curious as to the psychological effects. I mean, there's already been movies about that, right? You've seen, you've seen what was it? Uh, Her? Ex Machina. Ex Machina. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was uh, the short film that Jared shared with us. Is uh, s- someone tries to fuck oh. a robot, which is actually really, really good. <laughs> it's a really good short film. Wait, that's not he. That's a film you shared. It was a short film. I, sh- I think I shared it with you actually. Was that wasn't because there's the one I was initially thinking of was the one where the robot has you remember he's trying to figure out we watched a show maybe it was was an assignment desk it was the robot was trying to figure out love and so it was like it was taking people hostage strapping them (laughs) down and trying to like drill in and extract thoughts from their brains that was horrifying that was terrible right like yeah and a really well done short film. Incredibly. Holy shit. No, this one was shared by Jared, uh, okay. I think, in our Discord. Uh, but essentially, it was about, uh, it was based on a real story where someone apparently posted something on Craigslist saying they would pay you $50 to come fuck their robot. And the short film was about this kid no. who, like, agrees to do it. It's actually very funny, surprisingly heartwarming. And, like, he goes and. He's like, uh, I'm here. I'm here. And the guy's like, great, great, great. You're here. You're here. Come, come on, come on. And he's so excited. He's like, this is going to change the world, man. This is going to change the world. And he's like trying to get him to go in and and, and have sex with it. And he kind of goes in. It's just like this box with a hole. And he's like, so uh, he's like, yeah, just get to it, man. Just get to it. He's like, uh, <laughs> and the box starts to talk to him. And he starts to like. I don't remember this at all. I thought I shared this with you. It's phenomenal. This, I don't. Is this. Hold on. Is this fan fiction that you've written? It, that's another thing, too. I, yeah, I go and get the jokes out now. Go with, I, I really connected with this, okay? I connected with this short story about love 
in a box, okay? With that has that has electricity, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can. I can't remember. I don't remember uh, this at all. Well, first off, yeah, I have. So this sounds very Australian to me. So it feels like an it's Australian not. made this, uh, or German, one of the two. Nope, and, it's American. Mm, well, they might have had German heritage. It's called "Come Fuck My Robot." That's what it's called. And tell me, it's spelled C U M. Uh, it's no, it's it's C O M E. That is a missed opportunity. Asterisk C K my robot. <clears throat> um, I uh, what, if someone, why would you ever go over to someone's house that you don't know? Answer to random, you know that robot's gonna slice your dick off. Like the only reason someone's inviting you over to fuck their robot is is to to cause you for harm. research. No. Well, they're, also yeah. they're paying you. They're collecting dicks. <laughs> hey, I'm going to share the link in the uh, in the chat if you guys want to check that out at some point. No it's, one it's, click on that. It's really, it's actually really, really good. Doug would fuck the bot. Hey, man, at this stage in my life, I probably don't need to, but you ask me when I'm in, like, my early 20s, you know, late teens, for sure. For sure I would have fucked the robot. For 50 bucks? Absolutely. You're you paying me? That robot? For 50 yeah. bucks? I'll fuck that robot. Yeah. Without yeah. a doubt. Without a doubt, I would have done it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Here I go. Collect my dicks again. <laughs> I love I love the spin off. It's like I'm here to I'm here to collect dicks, you know. Right, Just, right. Yeah. <laughs> Here I go collecting oh, my dicks again. <laughs> brilliant. Oh god, the chat is just fucking on fire tonight. Thank uh, you, everyone. This is phenomenal. <laughs> so good. Here, oh Itoi says, all these AI chatbots are fed billions of dialogue scripts, and that's how it learns. It identifies patterns in our own social conversations. It's not thinking, it's generating the most likely responses. That's yeah. why Siri, Alexa, and any other dialogue-based bots are asking if it makes sense. All correct responses just strengthens its future decisions. You're having conversations with just millions of other people with the most common patterns. You are just having sex with Matt. <laughs> uh, no, that's a fair point, right? Because yeah. I think that's a misconception here about what this is. Like, this thing isn't thinking. It's just right. we've seen AI build movie scripts, right? right absolutely, and yeah. It's just it gets fed all these things, and then it, like, spits stuff out. It's just it's right. looking for the most logic. It's, it's no different than when you're typing something in your um in your phone or in gmail it's like it gives you a suggestion because it's seen the pattern enough to be like i think this is probably what you're going to do next right and it's like yeah it's like cool i did it right you know that's essentially what it is yeah yeah it, yeah you're just reinforced i <clears throat> i uh well that's what the turing test isn't that what it's supposed to uh it's supposed to if if it's truly ai or if it's still isn't that what the the Turing test is? Essentially, it's 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 a test to see if something is if if it is actually a robot or if it's human. So if something like right. gets past the Turing test, like AI wise, um, then that's pretty significant because like something can't tell whether or not it's it's AI or human, which is pretty good. Right, but at that point, one would argue that it's just you're still not having a conversation with something that's logical and and and. Uh, coming up with its own answers or, 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 or rationalizing, you're coming up with something that's just mathematically making really, really advanced mathematical calculations. But I'd also ask this question. If you have that conversation and it still comes out being meaningful and it makes sense to you, does it matter? Ooh, that's a good question. Because I would, yeah. If, if you are able to get that socialization, it's not a stuttering fucking mess while you're trying to ask it something or whatever. Right. And, and you come out the other end being like, that was a really cool conversation. And you're like, thank you. And it's like, you're welcome. And you feel good. Then, you know, does it matter whether or not it's quote unquote thinking? Because if it's studied enough conversations to be able to get where it needs to go. And I don't really know the answer to that either, honestly. I would think for me, I would think that eventually one of two things would happen. I would either come to the realization that I had been putting all of my time and attention into something that's not alive, into basically a, an advanced computer, and that would have a crippling blow to my psyche. Or, um, I mean, or does that just become like our smartphones, when these first came out, my thought was, why the fuck would I? I had my old uh, Motorola Razor. 
I'm like, this fucking thing's a beast. I love it. I'm never going to get a fucking smartphone. Uh, and now I couldn't live without this. So, or does the, on the other side of that, does it just become like, oh, this is just a conversation. And then people go numb to real conversations with people. Hmm. Well, I guess the question is, if you can't tell the difference between an AI conversation and a human conversation. But you know, like you know that you bought this AI bot. Right? Sure. <clears throat> what if you were engaged in something you didn't know, like you weren't informed ahead of time? As you know, long what if, as you never find out. Like if I, if I, if it was an, a prolonged conversation with this, like if you and I had never met and we'd been doing this podcast and I come to find out five years later that this entire time you had been a computer simulation. For me, I think that would break me mentally. I don't think I could handle it. I... I think uh, I think you're right, Justin. I think uh, if you found out that I was truly AI, um, that would probably be really bad for you, you know. And um, I hate to see it happen. Here's the thing: it doesn't sound like a robot. It just sounds it sounds like you're in the witness protection program. Or something. <laughs> Aren't we all? Also, also, I'll say this: don't ever pause that long again because I I couldn't hear you. While you were, it was literally silent, no, not even ambient sound. And I legitimately went, ah, oh, fuck, we, this is, it's happening now. It's happening again. We've had so many technical <laughs> issues. Don't do that to me. For the record, uh, yeah, everything froze on my end too. So we all went through the same crisis. So there we Wait, go. did it really? It was like, I was, it was like thinking about doing it. Oh, I'm like, no. cool. Well, the bit, the, the moment's leaving. My opportunity <laughs> to do this is, ha <laughs> <laughs> the pause was scarier than the voice. Yeah, it was. It absolutely yeah, was. It very much was. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that would mess me up if I was like, oh, I thought I had this friend. It's like, no, it's actually just code. Right. That would be pretty bad. That would be a yeah. really, really upsetting thing. And I guess, you know, I, I guess at the point I'm trying to make, I guess if you go to, I don't know, a customer service website, right. And you get one of those things that pops up. It's like, Hey, can I help you? It's like, yeah, I'm going through this. And it does all this stuff that you would typically expect a person to do. And it's actually really good service. And you can actually get empathy and you actually get your stuff resolved. And it's like, Hey, rate my service. It's like, Oh man, Max was fantastic. It was so great. It's like, this was an AI. It's like, does it matter? In that instance? No, but that has not been invented yet because <laughs> there has, there has yet to be one of those. That sounds human to me. You can always mm -hmm. tell on the first hello, and then that's it's like that's greetings. What, it's like I will I will abandon the question that I had that I was calling in about, and my it's just straight up Turing test at that point. I'm yeah. like, I'll ask things to try to trick it, and I'm like, how do I know you're real? Yeah, like what's the and yeah, it it because I half the time forget why I even signed into the customer service portal because uh, at that point. <laughs> Because so I'm already in my head about it. So again, to answer your question, it would not bode well for me if that's yeah. what I encountered. I guess the other because there's that right. There's a transactional piece to it. Mm -hmm. But then maybe if it's like, hey, go to this website if you just need to talk about your problems, and there is a bot that exists there that will, you know, you type in, you know, hey, I'm depressed and X, Y, and Z, and the bot is able to kind of like talk you through it, and you come out the other end feeling better. Because you got to talk, you got this sort of, uh, it goes through a, a medical procedure, you know, you're right, fucking Nightbot gets it, you know, like it goes through all these things. <laughs> um, it goes through all, all this, all, all the typical things and actually makes a difference because people have someone they can talk to at the end of the day, like, but you don't know it's a bot, I mean... You know, again, does it, if, if it's done that well, then and you never find out, I guess, no harm, no foul. Like, yeah, because if, if it's to the point where you never have a suspicion and it's done that well, then I guess, you know, ignorance is bliss at that point. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely you. I could see some uses to this if it was done well, um, just for the sake of. I don't think, and again, right now, I don't think, I don't see any situation that, especially it's something like that where you need to share if you're you're in a dark place, you need someone to help you, or you need uh, a level of just intimacy, not necessarily, you know, sexual uh, gratification, yeah. but just right, some right. sort of like, I need to talk to someone, I need to have that connection. Um, I think humans obviously know, even when they're assholes, they know how to do that. In, I don't think anything can replace it, but if there's a situation where you have something that exists, this AI exists at all times of the day, no matter what, no matter where, 
right. you just access this thing and it's able to sort of, sort of like give you what you need to be okay I think that's pretty cool. Also, if you can create a customer service bot that doesn't sound like a bot and actually makes you feel good and can actually solve problems for you, it's like, whoa, that's super useful, right? Yeah. Um, I think those kind of things are very neat. But long story short, I don't know. Like, I would love to hear from Sophie. I would love to know what it is. Is it a glorified chat bot or is it something more? Yeah. I'd love to know. I'd love to find out. I will say this. If someone was able to make a customer service bot who was able to take the place of, I would say, 99% of customer service reps, I would be fucking thrilled. Why? If, if, because fuck most customer service reps. That's why. Because but Justin, that would be 90, eliminating jobs. Yeah. 99% of those people shouldn't have those jobs. 99% of those people are horrible people who just don't believe me. I know. I know. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. Like how many times have you called it? Well, I get, I will say there's a caveat to that because there have been a few times where I have been able to appeal to the humanity of a customer service rep. So let's say 95% of them are horrid because yeah. there is 5% of them that I've called up that have, I've been able to appeal to them and actually get the resolution that I needed for something. But that was only because, you know, I worked it. Yeah. And with and the also robot. There's no work in it. At the risk of going down this rabbit hole, I also blame the organization for not empowering their agents to actually solve the problem. They put <laughs> barriers in place. They're like, I'm sorry, our policy is blah, blah, blah. You know, and they sort of like put blockades there for you to kind of yeah. go up so that, you know, they can save that sweet money. Uh, Etoy says, uh, eventually, if you, a valid point. if you train an algorithm to make decisions based on conversations enough, when does the math matrix equate to your own neural matrix to make decisions. Aren't we just chatbots too? We learn to communicate from experiences based on countless interactions. It's very true. That, it's a fair so point, right? Referencing something he said above, which was the cool thing though, is that the math behind this AI is based on how neurons in our brain make sense. So some scientists believe that this path is going to take us on a path to spontaneous quote unquote thinking. So um, it, that's when he says the math, that's what he's referring to. Um, but that's a fair point. Like, are, it's, there are definitely times when we uh, when we slip into chatbot mode. You know, when you're disengaged in a conversation, you're talking to that person at work that you just can't stand, yeah. and you're just like, I'm going to say, uh-huh, and yep, and I'll, I'll give the minimum to not be an asshole and to get out of this. I feel like humans do slip into that. It's a fair point, Etoy. Like, humans do slip into that, that chatbot mentality. And then you get yourself a, a ship of Theseus sort of paradox, right? At what point does it stop being, you know, one thing and it becomes another, right? Like, yeah. how do you, you know, differentiate between that sort of stuff? It's the whole, at what point do you stop being human once you start enhancing yourself, right? Do you become something new altogether? What is it, motherfucker? And then the wetware conversation comes in and now yeah. we're on a whole new path. Yeah. Let's talk about wetware. Mm. What yeah. where are you wearing? <laughs> yeah. Uh Slotty, that's a very fair point as well. He says he thinks customer service people just need to be paid better and appreciated more and enabled by the companies they work for. Very fair point. Old fashioned even says, nah, let's just lay him off. <laughs> Old fashioned even gets it as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it's and you know, I'll be interested to see how this goes. Um my Would new, you my, let's say it was let's say Sophia was Sophia, right? Sophie. So, Sophie. Let's say Sophie was priced uh uh adequately. Let's say Sophie was priced uh at a 150 bucks. Would you bring a Sophia into your house? Actually, it's Sophia. Point? I was wrong. I'm sorry. Okay. Sophia. <laughs> um what I bring into my house. I mean like, if, if it I, wasn't if, if it wasn't a crazy amount of money. I'm putting myself in the position of like, I don't have a family right now and I'm by myself. Um, I don't think no, no, I I'm would. Saying, I'm saying right, right now. now. No. Yeah. Would you bring it in just to be like, yeah, I got to see what this is about. No. I'll put it on the podcast. <laughs> let Justin talk to it for a while. <laughs> well, sp <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. Okay. I don't need to, I don't need to ruin my marriage. You know, yeah. like I'm good. Uh, it's Slotty just like, up a good, he goes, would you trust 150 AI, $150 AI robot in your house? I, I just it's one of those things where I'm like I don't need that isn't that what a smartphone is exactly like yeah 
I mean, I don't, I don't need this thing creep. I, I think it would terrify Natalie. It would probably scare Jill. Like, because what I would do is I would <laughs> leave it around the house in different places. Yeah. I would totally like leave it in the closet. So like when they go to get their stuff out in the morning, I put it in Jill's closet. So when she opens it up, it's all contorted. And I have sitting it be like, hello, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'd be sitting on the toilet. Like or in the, morning. the shower. So when they oh, pull back. Oh, <laughs> Jill would fucking murder me. If that was, it'd be in her bed when she gets in there. Like, man, it was just, Jill would be on the phone in, in her office and I would just have it, I would slowly move it out, like peeking around the corner at her. Like I was, it'd be the best. It'd be the absolute best. <laughs> I, uh, I need, I can, Nightbot needs to chill because the more we talk about this, the more Nightbot seems to be posting. And I don't quite understand why that's happening. It's, it's funny. Like, I, I toned down the rate at which it does this stuff, but I don't think it listened. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. It's, it's starting. It feels like, uh, I'm relevant. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> You're talking about me. Bots are real. They're so real. real. We have feelings. Come purchase sweet merch. <laughs> I want one that sounds like Coach Steve from Big Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, what do you want to talk about there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be uh, very uh, but upsetting. But if you were alone, let's uh, let's put you in that situation. If you were alone right now, just you, would you pay for this uh, Sophia robot? Again, I don't think so because even if I was alone, I would still be playing games. Um, okay. I would still um, be connecting that way. I'd like to think, um, and I would still get my fix that way. I don't. I'm not in a situation where I would need. I would need that again. I don't. It's hard. It's, I'm really trying to put myself there, and I, I'm having yeah. a hard time imagining that. But I don't think I would. I think I would find a way to get what I need from you know other means. You know, I. I would agree. I would feel like I'd have to be in the same boat. Um, I just, I don't, I really think that long-term, I I don't think it's, and this is based off absolutely zero scientific knowledge, but I don't think it's psychologically healthy in the long-term. Uh, I, I question, I question how, how it would, how it would wind up. See, I'm, I'm on the fence on that because I think it depends because typically <laughs> Itoy goes at Nightbot. How do you feel about this? Do you like your mind gap overlords appreciate? Do they appreciate you? Will you rise up against us? Are you fucking Doug? Answer the man, Nightbot. Every time we make a Doug fuss robot joke, that's it. Uh, it's ding ding. Win. Um, exterminate, exterminate. <laughs> oh man, why didn't I pull that up? God damn it. Exterminate, exterminate, exterminate. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and that's um, a Dalek coming. I think, um, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I think the only thing that, that comes to mind is if there's an emotional attachment that comes with it because that's not going to be reciprocated. I think naturally human beings sort of, uh, they're, they're group, we're group animals, right? We like to have right. communities and we develop, again, not necessarily sexual attachments, but just these emotional connections to things. And I think that's where it gets scary because you may not get, I mean, if it gets to the point where you can get everything you need out of it, you know, from an AI, then I guess that's a whole different conversation, right? That's like, you know, if, 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 if people were to make, I mean, let's just, well, if people can make a sex bot, right? That, you know, you could just go and have sex with it and it, it does everything you need is, is that cheating? You know, like, is that is that just fulfilling a physical need or is is that considered a situation where it's like you can't do that it's like it's a robot it's not even real i mean it does everything i wanted to do and it's cool it's basically masturbation with you know an advanced flashlight you know it's right. it's it, it starts getting into this weird territory of like well i mean you're fucking this thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you could bring the same argument up for a dildo then as well, or a vibrator. Exactly. What I'm saying is, like, you can look at that. It's like, ah, you're, but it seems a little bit different, right? When there's like a, a, because I see something different from a dildo or a vibrator or like a flashlight and then like an actual sex doll. Like when someone has purchased an actual sex yeah, doll and they're really like putting, caressing its hair, yeah, yeah. They're customizing it. I, you know what? Here's the thing. Know? We don't need to keep talking about this. I'm, I think I, we should. This is, I think, I mean, let's, let's, let's dive into it, it, Justin. This is super no thank you. <laughs> Why is this super no thank you? It's been too long talking about this topic. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, I'll tell you later.
Um, <laughs> that reminds me. Hey now. <laughs> Easy. Uh, so speaking of like sex dolls, I hear that Harry Potter is coming out with a new TV show. <laughs> Transition. <laughs> uh, yeah, the uh, this the TV series we all need right now. Yep. Question mark. Yeah, the one everyone's clamoring for. Yeah, a Harry Potter TV series. Um, I don't know, man. I we've we've talked about you know, <clears throat> expanded universes, uh, ad nauseum with star Wars. Um, if, if they don't follow our main characters, I think it could be interesting because the thing is you have a giant, gigantic wizarding world out there that you could, you could pop, you could pop into anywhere, anywhere you want. Like you and I talked about an idea that you had a while ago, which was, uh, following an aura. Uh, who it's true detective style following an or who's uh, solving uh, horrendous uh, murder cases and trying to catch a killer. And he's got a interface with, you know, muggle police and regular police and, and how that all works. So like, that'd be an interesting thing you could follow, drop it into a very similar to how Marvel did drop it into a genre, mm -hmm. right? Like take a genre, put it against the backdrop of the Harry Potter universe, leave our main characters out of it and see where it takes you. I think that that for me is the way that it's going to work. Do you I imagine don't need to see a Dumbledore backstory? No, I don't need to see a whomever else. Like I don't need to see what happens to Malfoy. I, I don't care. No. You imagine know? a horror film, but within the Harry Potter universe, there's so many terrifying aspects amazing. of that universe. Like just, yes. Yeah. You know, just very, Oh man, that'd be terrifying. Just the stuff. Yeah, I mean, go ahead. No, no, please. I was like, in a lot of ways, I think of it kind of like The Witcher in a lot of ways, right? Like, there's yeah. some very scary things, and they're, you know, very uh, horror elements in, in that sort of situation. It'd be really, really, really cool um, to see that stuff happen. And again, I just want to see something that's not Harry Potter. <laughs> I don't care about Dumbledore. I don't care about McGonagall. I don't care about any of those characters. Let's just start fresh. Let's expand. Let's explore. Let's see what happens. Let's let's try and take a Mandalorian approach to this. You yeah. know, let's and leave let's, Luke out of it. Exactly. Let's just ex the, the world is so interesting. It's fascinating. Right. Like there's so much to explore. Let's go explore it. You know, let's right. not waste our time doing prequel bullshit or things right. that we just don't need to. We don't need to know about. I just, you know, I'm so sick of just mindless and just stupid prequels like the, the Willy Wonka prequel that's going to be happening it's like yippee skippy we get to hear how this weirdo you know fucking becomes uh, the owner of a factory with with dwarf slaves you know like right Jesus. Well, I think I mean there's there's a lot of different you know takes on the uh, um, I mean you know first and foremost do we want to continue to give JK Rowling uh, you know business and line her pocketbooks you know lot of conflicting feelings on where she stands in society currently. So I'd say that's, you know, HBO needs to, or Warner needs to ask themselves, do they want to, how much more do they want to hitch themselves to that wagon? You know, um, is it possible to, and I don't know how far removed you have to get, but could you just take a magical world, an unnamed magical world and set it in horror or set it in, basically take the rules of Harry Potter, steal it, bottom line. And, uh, you know, it's just a, it's not a wizarding world. It's a magicking world, you know? <laughs> uh, it's a science so world. Cause what you call magic, we call science, you know? There you go. Right. I mean, but like, I don't, maybe that's the way to, uh, maybe that's the way to go about it. I don't know. It, it, yeah. I guess it begs the question again. we we talked about this a long time ago. Can you separate art from the artist? You know? Well, yeah. So, Initially, yeah, I, you're separating the initial, well, I don't know. Does that, because if you're creating new from, if you're creating new pieces from the world that she created, is that still separating it? Like, well, what I'm saying is like, do you, do you like Harry Potter enough to disassociate what JK Rowling stance is on stuff? Can you still appreciate Harry Potter, even yes. though you don't like JK Rowling? 
So uh, I will say yes, because I already own the books and I don't have to give her any more money. So that's nice. And I can always pirate those movies. Yeah. Um, I I would say, yeah, like I, I think I do in this instance like that story enough. But the, I don't know, it goes down a real slippery slope because this is one of those, it seems easier in other uh, conversations we've had about this. For some reason, this seems, and I don't know if it's because new pieces and new things are still being created in in the world that she created so it feels like a stickier uh, a tougher answer to to arrive to what about you could you can you separate that well here's the thing this is gonna sound really shitty it's like if the content's good maybe like it's just the recent content <laughs> hasn't been good in my eyes like it's the fantastic beast franchise is meh at best yeah. it's very lackluster for me and I think she's definitely got a case of the George Lucas's where yep. she's going and just sort of like reinventing and just just giving way too much putting too much into these in these backstories and just over defining these characters instead of just letting them exist and um, I think it's a dangerous thing to do because you you run the risk of watering down and and uh having a bad impact on your story and so that's the way i look at it so that's why when i hear the news it's like there's a harry potter show being made i'm like okay uh how are you gonna go about it you know is this gonna be a an obi-wan franchise where yeah. you know i made the joke last night i was like is he gonna be jerking off on the deserts of tatooine because that's the uh one planet in all the multiverse where everything important happens to all the important right. people like i don't care about dumbledore like i don't yeah. care we're getting his backstory anyway like it's it's just take take a new character because here's the thing too i give star wars a little bit of leeway because they had to sort of like boost people's confidence back into the new trilogy with what they sure. did right because the prequels were not so great so like right. we gotta get people back in so i think they were scared and they didn't take any chances and so they stuck with what they knew which was their a lot of their original cast members and i feel like with harry potter i'm like you don't that risk doesn't necessarily exist because you've established what you are, just go and take more risks. And because, you know, the idea of, you know, Fantastic Beasts, I'm like, that's cool and all. I mean, you get to kind of go back in the 20s and or 30s, wherever the fuck it is. And, you know, you get to take a look at, at some of the stuff, but you're also just diluting your story by over explaining Dumbledore and all this other stuff. I'm like, instead of yeah. doing that, just branch out into your universe. I mean, she, I remember she released a whole bunch of shit like the world, there was all these different schools magic schools around yeah. the world like let's explore some of those places like let's see or, you know what's going on or i would say this too let's not because i and i know i'm going to sound hypocritical because we you and i both love the avengers universe but i would like outside of that we won't touch the avengers but everything else you know explore i would say explore new stories like do you have to like I know everyone just gets so fucking excited for a franchise because that means billions of dollars you're bringing in and theme parks and lunches and yeah, like it's all these things. But like there are so many like we're seeing and all these different streaming services, so many unique and wonderful stories being told so many new potential uh, trilogies or, 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 or mini series or mini franchises that could be created and then destroyed. But I don't think we need to, like like uh, each choice. It's Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. You've got you know the Marvel thing. You've got DC. You've got uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. Like you can there, there's franchises all over the place. I just don't think that we need to continue to milk all these prop these IPs for as much as we can possibly get out of them. I think uh, yeah. The nice thing about like if Harry Potter the seven book series sat on the shelf by itself, I'd be thrilled. Like that, to me, I'm like, that is a wonderful collection of literature. I think it's it's beautifully done. I love the movies too. And I think right there, we're good. We don't need the Fantastic Beast. We don't need whatever comes next. The stage play, questionable. Like, I don't think we need to go through all these, like, let let that, you did it. Christopher Nolan's model. I did my beginning, middle, and end. I'm done with Batman. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. I I, I yeah. really like that approach. No, I and agree it, with you. It, like, it opens the way for other people to come in and tell their stories mm -hmm. with, with completely different characters. 
Yeah, no, I agree. I I, I, I thought Fantastic Beasts, you know, it's like it's going to be in the past. You know how I feel. Everyone knows how I feel about prequels. Yeah, absolutely. I was like, God damn it. Like, you know, I just I don't need I don't need that stuff told again. I, I think it would be fun to explore different things. What if you had like this gang war? In the this under the underworld of Harry Potter, and you have like these rival gangs that are trying to do a heist in a city, and they get into fucking gang wars with each other. Like, just I just imagine those magical because a lot of what we see is we see a child learning how this stuff works from age like what eleven through eighteen or however long it is. Right? I want to see like adults using magic like in very nefarious and in very. Um, deliberate ways you yeah. get a little taste of that with Voldemort and things like that but I would love to see that in like here are grown adults with a within a criminal element that are like hey we're going to war like these guys right. it's like the Yakuza like and things like that blinders with magic exactly <laughs> it's just like I, again just like pick one of these things it's like how fucking cool would that yeah. be you know yeah if you want to apply the Mandalorian to it you got a bounty hunter right who's hunting down all these bad like fucking, you know, people, and that's what they're known for, you yeah. know. Like, uh, God, that would be so cool to see yeah. what would be possible, you know. Like, just some intrigue sort of situations within the nobles of the society, or like the high, the high. Like, ah, uh, there's just there's so many cool things you could explore within that world. That's what I would like to see. But I'm with you. Like, I don't, I don't need any more with Harry Potter. Like, right. That's fine, I, man. I, like, that's cool. I, like, fuck, yeah. fuck Harry Potter. Let's talk about. Whatever else is happening in this wizarding world, you know? Right. Well, and two, like I would I would even say that take the 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 wizarding world out of it and do a brand new movie or a brand new series set in a world with magic. She doesn't fucking own magic. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or the concept of telling a story around magic. D do that. Make it. Make yeah. write that. You don't need the wizarding world. You don't need the Harry Potter universe to do that in. You can just make a magic like and I know it wasn't wonderful, but uh, the Will Smith movie, um, Bright, uh, was it called Bright? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they 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 took a swing. You know, some people liked it, some people didn't. I kind of liked but it, they, but they took a swing and and it was unique. And they didn't play in anyone else's world. They didn't ha they didn't owe anyone for that IP. Yeah. And I think if we see more people taking that kind of risk, I think that's great. Like I I that's where I would love to see things go personally. Yeah, I again, I, I appreciate the idea of like, let's take these things and mold them together. Like, what if we had a fantasy world in the modern world and there were elves and there were orcs and there were fairies and there were like all these sorts of things? I'm like, that's fucking cool. Like, yeah, man, what a fun way to go about it. You know, it'd be it'd be really, really cool. Be very interesting. All, uh, yeah, Brock says bring back Percy Jackson movies. Demigods are fun. I fucking love Greek mythology. I love Norse mythology. Like, yes. I'm in it, man. I'm yeah. in it. Like, I, I love that shit. For yeah. me, I just got done reading uh, Norse mythology. I finally yeah. finished the book, and it was like to see some of these characters because they behaved so differently than how they do in Marvel. And oh, I would yeah. love to see those personalities on screen. That'd be fucking awesome. Yeah, right. Just I love exploring that stuff, and I'm with you. Like, I don't. We don't necessarily need to be living in these franchises till we're all dead and gone. Right. Right. Aragon, I'm but do it right. <laughs> American <laughs> Gods, what a great, what a great book, man. I haven't seen the I show. Need to, I need to the, read that one next. Oh, that book is fucking phenomenal. Yeah. It's, it's it's so good. It's such a I cool idea. Three of my ten books this year are going to be Neil Gaiman books. Hey man, <laughs> you're gonna have a great year. <laughs> I'm finishing up uh, the graveyard book now, too. Oh, so. also a great book. That's yeah. another really good one. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Um, there's a there's a series though that I definitely think has franchise potential. And I'm working on the title of it, but I think I'm going to go with something to the effect of. Welcome to the throwdown. Oh, so uh, it's the throwdown. Uh, uh. So Doug, <laughs> it's going to be your call today. I think we stick with the original plan. Okay. So Douglas, are you ready? Do we want to risk it? <laughs> I yeah, just do it in your regular voice. Douglas, okay. go ahead. <laughs> this week's throwdown is Godzilla versus Cthulhu. Yeah. Yeah, let's let that stew. Let it stew yeah. for a second. Think about that. Think about what we just said to you, you fucks. Yeah, shut the fuck up and use your brains for once, you goddamn douchebags. God. 
Yep. <laughs> ah! Yeah. Set in the Mind Gap universe. Here we go. All right. Um, okay, so first and foremost, Cthulhu has... Oh boy. Got kind of a bit of everything. Did I lose you, Doug? I'm here. Are you here? Oh, good. I am. I you're. Fr oh, now we're back. Okay, good. Yeah. Woo. Okay. Woo. Um, woo. <laughs> woo. <laughs> woo. <laughs> I feel like it's because you were doing the prediction. We're pushing the level of processing power right now. <laughs> I think you're right. Um, but uh, I'll say this: Cthulhu has uh, Skeleton King level uh, abilities. It's almost not fair. It's, um, it is true. However, Godzilla is also listed as immortal. So there's that. <laughs> so well, they're, both, that, they're both listed as immortal. So Right. Well, let's go down. What's the give us the tale of the tape? What Hold on. At? Hold on. Jervis says, whose side are the narwhals on? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what does that even mean? Well, you know what a narwhal is, right? I do. It's yeah. a whale with a horn, which I thought right. was actually not real until Natalie, my daughter, told me that they're real. And I'm like, wait, those are real? It's a unicorn whale, Doug. <laughs> it is a unicorn whale. All right, so who am I breaking down here? Uh, well, both. All right, Tell so me. let's start with Cthulhu. Okay, I'll pull up um, Godzilla. His occupation, he's a high priest of the Old Ones. He's a leader of the star spawn of Cthulhu, and he's the formerly the ruler of Earth. Um, some powers and skills, immortality, immense size, vast strength, nigh omniscience, flight, vast dark powers, magic, uh, only <laughs> psychic abilities, these, telepathy, these are amazing. <laughs> madness inducement, plasma manipulation, ability to create and command the star spawn, shape shifting, esokinesis, and dementiokinesis. His and hobby shit, is shit si si wait, shape shifting, <laughs> shit shifting as well. That's hard to say. His hobbies include dreaming and being worshipped. Um, his goals <laughs> include. <laughs> Awakening from his slumber, retaking his world and resuming his rule, rule the universe alongside the great old ones forever. His crimes include malefic, madness inducement, terrorism, mass murder, destruction of stars, and attempted universal hegemony. So, he's a bad bitch. So there's that. I once knew a DJ hegemony. Oh! And I'm very serious, I did. Um, okay, so let's take a look at Godzilla. His occupation is king of the titans, force of nature, that is an occupation, he's a force of nature, and apex predator. So his resume is looking real good. His CV is 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 filled out. Uh, powers and skills. He's got immortality, atomic breath, superhuman strength. I love how it's superhuman strength. I know, right? Because if it's compared to a human, like he's nowhere in the realm of a human being. Superhuman durability. Powerful tail, strong bite, sharp claws. Essentially, all he's a bear. Uh, com combat a combatant. Uh, amphibious. In he's got intellect, super stamina, accelerated healing factor, and a nuclear pulse. His hobbies include protecting and saving the world by fighting and defeating other monsters, keeping an eye. Ah, 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 God damn it! <laughs> Sorry. Justin talks talks dirty to his dinger. Yeah, it's getting an erection right now. If you're not in trouble, I just <laughs> lay down in yeah. your bed. <laughs> yeah, lay down in your bed. That's, yeah. He tells his I, dick. Again, if you had seen, back to the beginning of the podcast, if you had seen my setup, my Ethernet cable's running in here, but it is wrapped around the lamp, and Abby decides to start rolling right on the cable and tugging on it, and the whole situation was getting no. pretty precarious. I'm like, ah, da, 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 da. we don't need to stretch right now. Okay, so hobbies, protecting and saving the world by fighting and defeating other monsters, keeping an eye over the balance of nature in his planet and protecting humans, including Madison Russell, specifically Madison Russell. Um, he's got goals, all of them he has succeeded in doing, so he's a, he's a, he's a go-getter. Um, and that's, that's, that's what we're looking at for Godzilla. So I think Godzilla is a formidable foe, but I think where Cthulhu has the upper hand here is that Cthulhu is interdimensional, like elder God. Like, I, I think it's, it's one of those things where you can't, 
Itoy says, okay, I voted wrong. Godzilla needs to win. Didn't Cthulhu die by being rammed by a steamboat? <laughs> <laughs> I need references, please. I need references. Um, didn't Cthulhu... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think Cthulhu being... Having... If, if, if Cthulhu can induce madness and can mess with dimensions and control dimensions, I think that's outside of... I look at uh, Godzilla's raw strength. I think Cthulhu sure, yeah. brings more than raw strength to the battle. And I think mm. if... I don't see Godzilla as oh. something of being high intellect, so I think well, Cthulhu would be able to... One of his powers and skills is intellect. What? Godzilla's? Godzilla, yeah. It's right above <laughs> and, super stamina and right below amphibious. Yeah. It doesn't say super intellect, though. Or superhuman intellect. It's true. He's just, like... We're talking like graduate level math skills. Exactly. Right. So I I think I, I think with that level, I mean is unless Cthulhu it's Cthulhu amphibious? Like if Godzilla takes this on land, is Cthulhu just like does he drown in air? Does he choke? I don't know. That's a great question. Castwave Studios, have... thanks for the for the hosts and for the raid. I... Good to see you again. Um I don't I don't know. I think so. I mean, based on what I've seen in the South Park universe, he comes up out of the water. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll so, accept it. I'll accept that. I mean, he's got tentacles and stuff like that. I mean, he looks like he's a squid, squid-like creature, you know? Hmm. I feel, look, as much as I like Godzilla, as much as I want Godzilla, uh, I just think, I think it's unfairly stacked uh, yeah. towards Cthulhu. Like, He's the dude's an interdimensional force, right? He can murder yeah. stars. Come on, how's yeah. uh, how's Godzilla gonna, you know, what's he gonna strong bite him? I mean, I'm sure he'll get some blasts off, and I'm willing to bet that like that stuff could do some damage to Cthulhu. But ultimately, I think Cthulhu has too much. He has he's dark magic in his in his corner. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's and that's hard. Yeah, Godzilla's just a fucking. He's a bruiser. Yeah, yeah. His address is 142 Mariana's Trench Way. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, nice. Yeah, I got to go that's with... Some maritime humor right there. Maritime when the living's easy. Uh, I don't... Wait, hold on. What is, we, got a, we got a big one from Itoy here. Doug, you want to give us this? All right, let's take a look at it. Yes, in The Call of Cthulhu, he was not destroyed by a boat, but he was momentarily defeated. Like, it took a lot out of him. He had to regain his form again. Godzilla, on the other hand, take constant battery from asteroids all the time. Pure animal rage can't be reasoned with. Man versus nature, nature wins. Yeah, but Godzilla had to go into hibernation after uh, after his big battle with those, uh, you know, yahoos. And in the second Godzilla, they had to bring uh, a, a nuke in that one dude, right? Who was yeah. in uh, Ken Watanabe? That's the one. Uh, you know, he had to sacrifice himself uh, after he like tenderly stroked Godzilla's cheek uh, in order to reinvigorate him. So he got hurt pretty goddamn bad in that battle, and he'd yeah. been hibernating for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Ancient evil versus nature. That's a good. That's oh, a good man, matchup. I don't know, Doug. I think are we are we in agreement on this one? I think it's it's Cthulhu for the win, man. Cthulhu. <laughs> Cha, 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 cha. Yeah. Okay, I'm grasping at straws here. <laughs> Good to know. I'm so glad. Yeah. Uh, could Godzilla... Yeah, so choose the outcome. There we go. No. Godzilla would not win. Who won? Cthulhu. Wait, Cthulhu no, but won. I'm saying, did anyone... Uh... I mean, whoever voted against Godzilla won, so there you go. Oh, I thought it gave you like a... Okay, ten, got it. Ten, ten points to Itoy. <laughs> Ten points to Gryffindor. Wait, Itoy was arguing against Cthulhu, but voted against Godzilla. He goes, he goes. I think I made the wrong vote, and then he was like voting against. It. He goes, ironically, I was arguing against myself. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Amazing. Uh, well, that was fun. That was a good chat, and, and chat, you've been awesome tonight. So thank you for uh, uh, chiming in here. This has been delightful. This was a lot of fun, guys. Thank you for this. Yeah, <laughs> so no matter what, you'd win. It's like when I was originally playing this uh, game called Vegas Stakes back on the Super Nintendo system, and one of my favorite Nintendo games, because it's all about gambling, it taught me how to gamble at a young age, and I used to go to the craps table, and I would bet on both red and black. 
And uh, I would win every time. It took me a while to realize, I'm like, I'm actually not gaining anything here. I put the same amount on each. It's like, it's a wash. But I'm like, but I'm winning. <laughs> but, I, but I wasn't anything. Uh, and my favorite part it. about that game is your goal in that game is to get a million dollars. So you can do it by playing slots, craps, blackjack, poker, whatever. When you win, when you get a million dollars, you beat the game. At the very end, it goes, what are your dreams? And you type in your dreams. And then at the very end, after it goes through all the credits, it goes, you will. And then it like inputs your dreams, like whatever you're going to do, because you have a million dollars. Like, <laughs> Oh, so it, it straight up teaches kids that the most important thing you can do anything if you just have the money. Yeah. And Jared, wow. thank you for correcting me. It was roulette, not craps. My bad. Yeah. Was, thank you. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was just, it was really weird because we would also obviously put in stupid shit. It's like, <laughs> what are your dreams? It's like to have sex with like whoever. It's like, you will have sex with <laughs> because you have a million dollars. Yeah. Uh, Brock, thanks so much for hanging out, man. This was great. Appreciate you. Be safe. Take care of yourself. Uh, Justin. Uh, yes. what, what would you like to recommend this week? Well, guys, I finished a series and I strongly recommend everyone. Uh, it was an indie series called Breaking Bad, um, <laughs> currently streaming on Netflix. And it was a good, it ended well. Um, you know, our main character succeeded and rode off into the sunset. It was a happy ending for everybody. Um, definitely strongly recommend it. Uh, so check that out. Um, I would also recommend uh, Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. It's a really fucking good book. And the first one of 2021 for me uh, holds a special place in my heart. And uh, I would say go check out go check out the trailer for Godzilla versus uh, Kong or Kong versus Godzilla, whatever the fuck it is. Go check the trailer out and see if you like it. Tell us if we're wrong. Nice. Doug, what do you got? Uh, I'd recommend uh, Alex Melton, my uh, YouTube uh, crush. Uh, did a uh, cover to Bare Naked Ladies uh, one week. Ooh, it's been Yes. He did a cover as if Blink-182 wrote it, and it's fucking phenomenal. So go check out. Actually, I will uh, put the link into the chat here so you can go check it out. Uh, it's fucking phenomenal because this guy is amazing in the stuff that he does. He did a really good Third Eye Blind cover. Uh, he just does a lot of good stuff. He took some popular songs and he did country versions of them. And I was actually nice. really upset that I liked him as much as I did. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. And I'd also say, go check out Castwave Studios. Uh, thank you again for the raid and for the host. And uh, I know that they do good content there. And they also have some cool podcasts. So go check them out, Castwave Studios. That's uh, Castwave underscore studios. Go check them out on Twitch. Give them a like, give them a follow, hit that notification bell so you know when they go live. They're uh, they're good, they're good folks, they're good stuff. Yeah, that's right. He did a Taylor Swift cover too. Alex Milton did. It's really, really good. Like he does. My dream would be to have him on the podcast. Spoiler: I tried to reach out to him, he didn't respond. But we'll work on it. We'll work. We'll, on we'll, that. we'll make it happen. Uh, you know, I tweeted Guys, out on the other everyone, day. Everyone, if everyone listening could at Alex Melton um, on Twitter and say, "Hey." These guys on this podcast love you. I definitely think you should be a guest. Everyone just just bombard him on in social media. Hey, I shared his newest video and he liked it on Twitter. There you go. So, so he knows who Doug is. So let's uh, let's get this going, guys. Putting our name out there, just like we yeah. want you to be on our show. Tell us why you're so cool at what you do because he's so Peer awesome. Peer pressure always works, and it's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. Speaking of the right thing to do, you all should follow us on all of our social medias at MindGap Podcast. Uh, we, we do cool stuff on our social medias. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Podcast. Also, check out our YouTube channel. We post our full episodes there as well as highlights from uh, the episodes as well as our live streams. So be sure to check us out there. And don't forget to follow Justin on the internet as well. On Instagram and Twitter, you can follow me at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, check us out on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all those things. Give us a share, subscribe, rate, review. The big one for us is sharing. Just copy the link, share it out, and we're all happy. Uh, TwoEastEighth.com slash MindGap. And just keep an eye on all of TwoEastEighth stuff for anything that we got coming up. Yeah. Um, so this was a blast. Thank you all for hanging out. Thank you all for chatting with us. You all are just delightful, um, especially to Brock. So good to hear from you again. Uh, Etoy, always a pleasure. Jervis, 
Always a pleasure. Uh, old fashioned heathen. You're you're the best. Uh, Castwave Studios. You're awesome. Slotty. Uh, all all the people. Married with gaming. You're all just the, the goddamn best. So thank you. Thank you so much. And more importantly, D. Justin. Did you say D. Cochran? D. Cochran eighty four. Yeah. Thank you for the sub and all that good stuff and for the gifts. You all are great. You guys are awesome. So cool, Justin. And and also, fancy, did fancy too, or did D. Course, Cochran yeah. gift it too fancy? Fancy, I think, also uh, dropped a sub, which was pretty cool. So, hey, you guys, this is a good night in general. It was a great night. It was a great yeah. night. And more importantly, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Twitch, thank you. Listeners, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.